Hey everyone, I am so excited to film today's video. I feel like this is the video I was just waiting to film this month. So today I'm sharing all of the best drugstore and affordable makeup releases of 2022. 2022 was like the year of drugstore launches. I mean, honestly, there were so many good makeup launches from high-end brands and drugstore brands, but every year I feel like the drugstore continues to step it up and create really high quality products. And as I'm sitting here looking at the products I'm going to share in today's video, I feel like so many of these are better than high and alternatives I have in my collection. I just think the drugstore is amazing these days. So if you like drugstore videos and you're new to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe. My name is Andrea. I film videos all about cruelty-free beauty products, and I tend to focus on drugstore and more affordable products in general. I actually ordered some new drugstore launches that I'll be reviewing on my channel soon but I'm just excited to talk about these products. Like these are the best of the best. I am going to film a video on my high-end favorites, which will be up next. And then I did do a video on the worst makeup of the year, which I already uploaded. If you want to check it out, I'll link it below. But let's jump into it and start talking about all of these amazing launches. Everything in today's video did launch in 2022. Let's start with this one. e.l.f. launched the Power Grip Primer pretty early this year and this became my favorite primer ever. It's my go-to. I actually used it up fully and then repurchased it and I have about half of this one left but I absolutely love the texture of this product. It locks your makeup into place so well. It really hydrates the skin and gives you this naturally glowy look, and your makeup just looks so smooth, but it also lasts all day long. They just came out with a new version of this, which I did order. It has niacinamide in it, so I'm curious to see how they compare, but without a doubt, this was my favorite primer launch of the year, and it's become my go-to. It really does such a great job at prepping your skin for foundation, and I'm so glad they came out with it because I love it. By the way, I just did a video recently, like a full face of drugstore makeup. Every product was under $10, and I used a ton of these products in that video, so if you want to check it out, I'll link it below. I also wanted to mention this primer as well. This is a very close second. It's from NYX. It is the Plump Right Back Plumping Syrup and Primer. So I've used this quite a bit, but it doesn't really look like it because a little bit of this primer goes such a long way. This one is very smoothing. It preps your skin really well if you deal with a lot of texture or large pores, but what I like about this primer compared to other smoothing primers is my foundation doesn't move around. Sometimes when I'm using a smoothing primer, my foundation breaks down or it slides around or just doesn't dry down very well because a lot of them have that very slippery silicone texture. This one's smoothing, but it's not quite as slippery as a lot of other smoothing primers. So I think this one does a great job too. I do tend to reach for the e.l.f. more often because I feel like this one extends the wear of my foundation a little bit better, but this one's a great option too and I've reached for it so much this year. e.l.f. launched my favorite powder foundation this year. This is the camo powder foundation the texture of this product is so perfect before 2022 i had tried quite a few powder foundations actually heading into 2022 i was kind of on a powder foundation kick and ever since trying this one i haven't used any of them because this is just everything i want in a powder foundation it has really good coverage it's definitely buildable so if you use a large fluffy brush it's a little bit more natural but if you use a damp beauty sponge you can get really good coverage with this like pretty much full coverage. It's also a very smoothing formula. It makes your skin look super even, very smooth, very, very soft, and it wears really well throughout the day. It's not dry or powdery or cakey like other powder foundations I've tried. It really is such a flawless, perfect formula. So this is amazing. I definitely recommend trying it out if you've been thinking about trying powder foundation because I think this one performs so much better than pretty much any other powder foundation I've tried. I also have a liquid foundation to share with you in today's video. This one I feel like has gotten some mixed reviews, but I love it. It's the Makeup Revolution IRL Filter Longwear Foundation. I do have a video on my channel using this. If you want to check it out, I'll link it below. I'll link any related videos where I'm using these products in action in the description box, but I'm also going to do another full face of drugstore makeup very, very soon. But I love the texture of this. It is so smoothing on the skin, and I feel like that's typically what I go for when it comes to complexion products these days. It doesn't matter if it's a primer or a powder or a concealer or a foundation. If it smooths out my skin and stays in place well, I'm sold. And I love this product because it just makes my skin look very, very airbrushed. Honestly, I feel like the name is very fitting because it does kind of give your skin that soft filtered effect. It has a really, really good coverage, but it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It really has a very soft weightless finish. So I'm a big fan of this, but again, I know it has some mixed reviews, so maybe read some other reviews before you purchase it, but 
Truthfully, if you have oily skin like me, you deal with texture, you're looking for a long wear foundation, I think you'll really enjoy it. Actually, this is the only product that I'm sharing in today's video that didn't actually launch in 2022, but I discovered it in 2022. It is the Catrice True Skin Concealer. I think I actually purchased this at the very end of 2021, but it has been my go-to. It is such a good formula. It's very hydrating, incredibly blendable. It looks so smooth on the skin, but it also stays in place really well. As I get a little bit older and the fine lines on my face are a little bit more pronounced, I noticed that a lot of concealers can kind of enhance them, which it's not the end of the world. Everyone has fine lines as they get older, but usually if I'm looking for something a little bit more smoothing, again, on that theme of smoothing products, this is what I reach for. I also love the fact that it is so incredibly hydrating. It feels amazing on the skin and it just stays in place really well. I don't have anything bad to say about this product. I think it's like $6. It is such a good option. So I'm currently on a loose powder kick right now and actually during like the last three, four months, I haven't been wearing powder as much. I'll usually use it to set my concealer and then I'll take a large fluffy brush after I do the rest of my makeup and gently set the rest. But I used to just layer the powder on my face and I feel like that will probably still be the case when summer rolls back around and my skin is a lot more oily. So I haven't been using this product for like the last three or four months, but during the majority of the year, it was my go-to. So I wanted to mention it in today's video. It is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Pressed Face Powder. If you're looking for a mattifying powder that locks your makeup into place all day long, that provides a little bit of coverage, and again, just makes your skin look really smooth and even, this is the perfect option. This does such a great job. It really keeps your makeup in place. And if you're doing like something a little bit more light coverage, like just a spot concealer or a tinted moisturizer, but you have the issue where those products move around or break down and just don't, you know, really stay in place well, because a lot of those products can tend to be a little bit more glowy. This is nice for the areas where you do tend to get oily. If you take a really dense brush or a beauty sponge and really press this into the skin, your skin will stay matte all day long. If you use a large fluffy brush, it just provides like a light layer of matte powder, which is probably how I would use it more these days, but it really is such a good powder if you have oily skin. I am so excited to talk about cheek products because 2022 for me was the year of cream and cheek products. I never really thought that I could just pull off cream cheek products because my skin is oily and I always just assumed they would melt off my face or they wouldn't stay in place well because in my limited experience, that that was kind of the case with other products that I had tried in the past. But this year, so many brands launched cream products that I feel like now there's something for everyone. Whether you have dry skin or oily skin, or you want something really intense or something a little bit more subtle, there are so many good options these days. Makeup Revolution launched the best cream bronzer this year. This is only $8. Every single time I use it, I cannot believe I'm not using like a $30 bronzer because it is completely effortless. I don't have anything bad to say about this product. I think it is the best cream bronzer out there. It is called the Ultra Cream Bronzer. So I have the shade Light. Every single time I use this product, I'm blown away by the quality. It is so smooth, incredibly creamy, so easy to work with. If you are new to cream products and you're kind of intimidated by them, try this one. This one takes absolutely no effort. Yesterday, I used a high-end cream bronzer and I was like, I need to go back to using this one because it is so good. It has really, really good pigment, but it's so creamy and blendable that it's kind of like an effortless product. I just recommend going in with a small amount and then you can gradually layer it up. It never looks cakey, it never looks heavy, it never picks up the foundation underneath. It is so glowy and luminous, but it also stays in place really well. It is the best cream bronzer out there. And it's only $8. I honestly cannot believe that. I also tried this product, which I did want to mention in today's video. This is kind of more of like a contour product, but I do use it as like a bronzer contour all in one. It's the NYX Wonder Stick. So this is a dual ended product. One side comes with a cream highlighter and then the other side comes with a cream contour. But like I said, I do tend to use this as a bronzer contour all in one. This is very, very long lasting. It's not quite as creamy as the Makeup Revolution, but if you're looking for a product in like a stick form, something that's very easy to work with because you can get a really precise application by just drawing this on your face, this is perfect. It blends out easily, stays in place well. It's a really, really high quality option too. Flower Beauty launched the most beautiful liquid highlighter formula this year. These are the Spotlight Liquid Highlighters. So I do have two shades. I'll swatch them for you. I recently picked up another one. They're so gorgeous. And I don't film a lot of dupe videos these days because I feel like people have gotten so comfortable calling every product a dupe. 
And sometimes I feel like it makes sense, but a lot of time I see someone comparing two products and saying it's a dupe, and I'm just like, that is not a dupe. The formulas are not even close. So I just try to be really careful when I call something a dupe these days because I feel like it can be a little bit misleading. But I really do feel like this product is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Glow Ones. I tried those out probably about a month ago for the first time, and I almost prefer these. I just think that these are a little bit more customizable. You can do a really light layer for a natural glow. You can build them up to look a little bit more intense on the cheeks. They're so stunning, so easy to work with, and I love that you can layer them over powder or directly on top of other creams or liquids, and either way, they look really good. Honestly, I haven't worn powder highlighter very much over the last few months since discovering liquid highlighter because this just looks really natural on the skin. Like, it almost melts into your skin or your other makeup, so it doesn't look like you're wearing a powdery texture as a highlighter, and I just love it. I think it is so gorgeous. You can mix a little bit in with a blush to give yourself, like, a naturally glowy look and these are amazing. I really don't think you need to spend your money on a high-end alternative because these from Flower Beauty are just as good and in my opinion maybe just a little bit better. I actually do have a powder highlighter to share in today's video but it's not a typical highlighter. It's kind of like a highlighter blush bronzer all-in-one and this one's probably more of like a highlighter bronzer combo but this powder is so gorgeous. It's from Essence. It's the Kiss by the Light Illuminating Powder. So I mainly wear this one. This one is called Star Kissed and I'll use it in a couple of different ways. Typically I will use it after I apply like a cream bronzer, cream blush, and I'll just use it to set those products into place and it gives my skin such a gorgeous glow, but it's very, very lightweight. So it's not like you're setting your cream products into place with a typical powder because this obviously has like a glowy powder mixed in. So I love it because it's so lightweight, but it adds just like that extra glow to your skin and it doesn't take away from the glowiness that the cream products have already given you. I feel like I said that in kind of a complicated way. It's just such a light powder so it's great to set cream products into place because it's not too heavy but it's also nice to use as just like an actual powder highlighter, powder bronzer. If you like a glowy bronzer or if you like a glowy highlighter and you have a darker skin tone than me, this would be so perfect, so stunning on the skin. I actually tried so many good drugstore blushes these days, especially liquid and cream blushes. If you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, I've actually uploaded quite a few videos sharing like my favorite drugstore and affordable blushes because I feel like every month I'm discovering other formulas that are just really, really good. But there are two standouts that I wanted to share in today's video. So the first one is from Profusion. These are the Blush Hour Soft Matte Liquid Blushes. These are amazing and I, is this the first liquid blush I tried? No, it's not the first liquid blush I tried, but I feel like it's the first liquid blush I tried that had me convinced that a liquid blush could look better than a powder blush. I'm wearing the shade Bellini. What's interesting about this formula is it's a matte formula. And a lot of the time when I try a liquid blush, it has like a glowy formula or a luminous formula or it almost has like a serum texture to it, which I think looks really natural on the skin, very, very pretty, but sometimes you just want more of a matte finish, and I feel like that's where these come in handy. They stay in place extremely well. I wouldn't call them a dupe for the Rare Beauty blushes because I do think the textures are kind of different, but these are a really good alternative. They're $4, and I think they're almost easier to work with than the Rare Beauty blushes. The Rare Beauty blushes are so gorgeous, but they're intensely pigmented. And these actually have really good pigmentation too, but they're a little bit thinner, so I find that they blend out a little bit easier than the Rare Beauty ones, but they're very long lasting. They stay in place all day long. I also wanted to mention this formula from AF94. This is a cream blush that comes in a stick, which I think is always nice to have. So I only have one shade. I thought I purchased the second shade, but I can't find it anywhere, so I don't know what happened to it. But I have the shade If You Dare, which I think is so perfect for this time of the year. It's a really pretty berry, which you can sheer out to look a little bit more natural. You can build up to look a little bit more intense. This is such an easy formula. And again, if you're new to cream products or you're kind of intimidated by them, this is a nice option to try because you can't really mess it up. It's very soft, really blendable. It's not overly glowy. It definitely has more of like a soft satin finish. So it stays in place really well throughout the day too. And they do have some really gorgeous colors. Again, I know I bought like a peachy pink shade. I just don't know where it is. It has to be in my room somewhere. So I need to do like an end of the year makeup reorganization, not a declutter. I just need to like go through all of my makeup and reorganize and just kind of like maybe take inventory of what I have. I got cut off, but I think I was saying 
Like sometimes when you refresh your makeup and you reorganize it, you're almost like re-inspired to try products that you haven't tried in a little while. So that's something I kind of want to do as we head into January. It's funny because as I was getting ready for this video, I was watching a few older videos on my channel, just seeing what I loved in the beginning of the year, and I was talking about this in a haul video, and I said, I hope I love this product because then I'll have like a complete mixed brow routine, and I do love it so much. I've actually used it up and repurchased it this year, I think twice, because I can't put it down. It's the NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Mascara. This does such a good job at locking your brows into place. It makes them look thick and full and voluminous, and I... I love it. I feel like it's really transformed my brow routine. And I feel like this year I just nailed down like such a quick, easy brow routine because of this product. I literally just comb it through my brows, let it dry, and then I take the NYX brow pen and use that to fill in any sparse areas and that's it. I'm good to go. Sometimes I'll take the brow pencil and maybe extend my brows a little bit, but day to day I don't typically do that. I think this product makes such a difference and I actually have a video on my channel earlier this year testing it out and I remember using it and I was just shocked by how well it worked like the first time I used it. So I love this product. It was funny to go back and watch those videos because now at the end of the year, just like knowing how much I've loved it and how much I still use it, I, I just didn't even know back then how much I would love it. I don't even know what I was using before this. Probably the e.l.f. brow gel, which I do still like, but this one is like an amped up version of that one. I'm going to do a video sharing the best and worst eyeshadow palettes of 2022. So I don't have any specific palettes to mention in today's video, but I do have some single shadows that I wanted to talk about because I feel like this year I was getting more into single shadows as well as cream and liquid shadows. So NYX launched these Ultimate Glow Shots and I love these. I think these are so much fun. If you are a fan of a liquid shadow, especially like a shimmery liquid shadow, these are perfect because they're very blendable, very pretty on the eyes. They definitely give your eyes like a really intense metallic sheen and they stay in place well throughout the day. So this one is in the shade Wow Cacao. I feel like that was kind of a sloppy swatch. I'll do a close-up shot for you too. And then this one is Grapefruit Glow, which this one is also really pretty as an inner corner highlight too, but they're so metallic, so intense. They just look really pretty on the eyes and I always want to add more colors to my collection, but whenever I'm on Ulta's website and I'm trying to decide, like typically when NYX is on sale, I can't narrow it down. There are like four different shades I want to try, so I feel like as I'm sitting there trying to decide, I just end up with none of them because I honestly can't decide. But I do wear these two quite a bit, so I'm glad that I did pick them up. So if you're looking for a glowy liquid shadow, this is the formula to try. If you are a matte eyeshadow fan, you have to try the Lottie London Liquid Shadows. These are so good. These are called the Color Cloud Longwear Matte Liquid Shadows. My absolute favorite shade is this one, Love & Cocoa. I wear this one all the time. It's such a great option if you're looking for just like a warm brown eyeshadow. It's the perfect one and done. I also like this lighter, peachier one called Peach Out but these are so smooth on the eyes, very, very blendable. I actually hadn't tried a lot of liquid matte shadows. I feel like a lot of the liquid shadows I've tried over the years have been glittery, glitter, glittery or sparkly or shimmery or like foiled like those NYX ones, but not matte. The only other brand that makes liquid matte shadows that I've tried is About Face, and I think those are so good, but these are even more affordable. They don't have quite as many shades as About Face, and a lot of them are lighter and more pastel, but if you're a fan of neutrals, these two are really, really good. The last eyeshadow I wanted to mention is this one from Flower Beauty. These are the Chrome Crush Pressed Pigments. So I'm wearing this one today. This one is in the shade Copper. I also have a really pretty gold one, which I can't seem to find right now. I'll try to find it so I can swatch it for you, but the copper one is so stunning. I feel like it just transforms my look. Other than this, I literally just have like two matte shadows in the crease. I don't even know which palettes I pulled them from. Maybe like a Huda Beauty palette, just whatever was in my drawer. And I just placed this all over the lid with my finger. It goes on perfectly. I do feel like these are a little bit expensive and they actually went up in price. I mean, everything's going up in price these days, but they didn't launch too, too long ago. And then I think they went up maybe a few dollars, but Flower Beauty does go on sale on Ulta's website fairly often. So I usually wait until there's a sale and then I that's when I purchased this second one. But if you love a really pretty metallic eyeshadow and you don't necessarily want like a liquid form or even like a ColourPop Super Shock shadow, this feels like a powder shadow, but it has really good color payoff. It's super pretty. I don't have any new eyeliners to share with you in today's video. I feel like I've just been using a lot of my go-tos. Like today I have the 
ColourPop, a cream gel liner on my waterline. I used the LA Girl ones, the NYX ones. So this year I didn't, I don't think I really tried any new eyeliners to share, but I did find a new mascara. And again, I tried this at the very beginning of the year. So I feel like a lot of these products are things that I've talked about all year long, but the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara is so good. I'm wearing this today. I did apply a good amount of it. I I feel like this eyelash looks kind of weird. It's throwing me off. I'm using the Grande Lash, and I do think that it is making my eyelashes longer because as I was doing them today, I just felt like they looked a little bit more dramatic than normal. So I do feel like that's working. I've been using it for one month. I've also been using the Grande Brow. I did take before photos, so when I hit like that three-month mark, I'll share... Um, like an actual update and show you how my lashes and brows look. But anyway, this mascara is so good if you like dramatic lashes. It adds volume, it adds length, it builds, it can be super intense, or you can go in with a light layer and just get really long lashes too. I repurchased it like three times this year because I love it. It is so, so good. It does have a tendency to look a little bit clumpy, so if you're not a fan of clumpy lashes, I wouldn't recommend picking it up. But if you just go in with like a light layer, you still get really good length and a little bit of volume without the clumpiness. But it is a very, very wet formula, so I feel like it is easy to get to that point where it does look a little bit clumpy, but I just love it. Okay, let's finish up with some lip products. So I fell in love with lip oils this year, and I think there were so many good options, a ton of really good releases, but I think my favorite lip oil formula from the drugstore was this one from Milani. Actually, these might have come out at the very end of 2021, but I don't know if I tried them until 2022. These are the Fruit Fetish Lip Oils. I feel like these were sold out everywhere for such a long time time because people just fell in love with the formula. I believe there are four shades. I would love to see them launch even more this year, but these are so good. They are very glossy, super hydrating, super shiny, really thin and comfortable, and they smell so good. They have some different scents. I love that these have a really giant doe foot applicator. They're so, so pretty. Like if I'm just running out the door and I don't have a lot of makeup on or I do have a lot of makeup on. I feel like these are nice because they add like the perfect glossy sheen and a hint of color. So I'll either wear them on their own or I'll throw them over a lip liner and they're really easy to apply multiple times throughout the day. And again, they just smell really good. Like the whole experience of using this product is so nice and I love them. I think the drugstore as a whole did such a good job with lip oils. I don't know that I tried a lot of high-end lip oils this year. I did try some really good high-end glosses that kind of felt more like a lip oil, but as for like true lip oils, I feel like they're there were just so many good drugstore options this year. Okay, so as for lip gloss, my favorite lip gloss from the drugstore was definitely this one. NYX came out with the This Is Milky Gloss line. They already had a milky gloss line, but they kind of redid it, and... I don't know exactly what the difference is between the two, except for the fact that the new ones have like a milkshake scent, but the formulas are different. I guess I should say I don't know exactly what they intended the difference to be, but I do think that they are a little bit more smooth on the lips. They have a little bit more pigmentation overall, and they're not quite as like milky and streaky on the lips as the original line. So if you're purchasing one of the This Is Milky glosses, I recommend going for one that has like the little milkshake on it. These are so smooth, incredibly glossy. I have one on today. This one's in the shade Milk and Honey. This one actually is one of the more sheer ones. I'm wearing it over a lipstick, but one of my favorites is the shade Chocolate Shake. It is such a beautiful, like, what, what is with my swatches today? It is like such a beautiful, cool toned brown. I don't know what's going on. I'll do a better close-up swatch for you. I think it's because instead of like looking at my hand and swatching the product, I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder doing it and it just does not turn out right. But look at those swatches, like that is one swatch. I did not layer those up. They look so good, very glossy on the lips. I love them. I've actually reached for these over other high-end glosses in my collection. I'm not always in the mood for a pigmented gloss. Like usually I do like something a little bit more sheer and light, but when I do want pigment, like this is the formula I reach for. NYX also launched these lip liners. I feel like these were maybe like a relaunch or they reformulated them, but these are the Line Loud Lip Pencils. So I do have a good amount of lip liner in my collection that I really enjoy already. So I don't usually run out and try a lot of new formulas, but I thought the colors NYX launched were really, really nice. So I just thought I would pick them up and try them out. And I really enjoy them. I'm wearing this shade today. Uh, what is it called? Goal Crusher. You can't really see it because I'm wearing like a peachy nude lipstick over it and then a lip gloss on top of it. 
But I like these because they are like the best of both worlds when it comes to lip liners. Usually with a lip liner, you'll get something really creamy, but it might not last really well on the lips. Or you'll get a very long lasting lip liner, but it's kind of dry and uncomfortable. These are very creamy, so as you apply them, they're really smooth, really easy to apply, but then they dry down and they stay in place all day. So I'm really impressed by this formula. I feel like they just found the right balance with this. And again, they're not super expensive. I think they're maybe like $8. They have really pretty shades to choose from. They are like a traditional pencil liner, so you can sharpen these. You don't have to worry about like rolling it up and then the lip liner breaking. I found that I do tend to prefer like a regular pencil liner rather than one that's retractable because I just feel like these these last better and the retractable ones tend to break on me more than the pencil ones so these are great as for lipstick i had to mention this formula from ColourPop. i love these these are the ColourPop glowing lips i feel like these are so underrated i know they launched this year i feel like it was kind of near the beginning of the year but i never hear anyone talk about these because ColourPop has a ton of lip products but if you're looking to try one that you don't necessarily hear a ton of people talk about try the glowing lips these are just like the perfect combination of everything they're very moisturizing they're glossy they're comfortable they have a good amount of pigmentation but they're not overly pigmented so I feel like they're perfect for everyday wear and on days where I do want like a little bit more color I'll just layer a more vibrant a more vibrant lip liner underneath but this year I was just not into like any sort of uncomfortable lipstick I didn't want matte lipsticks I didn't want anything drying I didn't want anything that felt heavy on the lips and these are so perfect because I feel like they are kind of like a mix between a really good lip balm and a lipstick so they're not quite as intense as like a true full-on lipstick and they're also a lot more comfortable because they have like that balmy effect to them they're really really nice they have a bunch of shades and I feel like they randomly launch them with different collections but again they're just really underrated so if you're looking for a comfortable lipstick these are perfect so those are my favorite drugstore and affordable products from 2022 there were so so many good products and I don't know I just get excited talking about them because there really are so many amazing affordable options these days which just makes me happy because I feel like that wasn't always the case but the drugstore has stepped it up so much and I just love these makeup products so much. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll definitely be sure to film a ton of drugstore related videos in 2023. So I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss them. And I'll see you guys very soon with my favorite high-end products of 2022. Bye.